Good morning, afternoon, or evening as appropriate. How are you all on this lovely Thursday? How's it going, Faley? Nitrous Oxide, Just Blake, Steve with a B, Skeptic, Stefan Andre, Paradox, Doomblaze, Aeon Iconics, Adonis Incarnate, that's a fun pair of names to say back to back, Infrared Eclipse, Duke of Lameness, Permapensive, Metafusion, how's it going? Hey there, Crip Rat Daddy, Frinkle Star, Harry Hose, Olivia 5K with 22 months, bought a lockbox and a speaker from the from Amazon the other day. Today they arrived safe and sound. Excellent. Dr. Pepper Phoenix, thanks for making it official by converting your prime sub to a tier one. Nitrous Oxide with the nine months during the pre-roll here. I think that Nyao Bonus is probably your least favorite. The th talking about the three potions. I think the three potions Nyao Bonus is your least favorite. You'd rather have a busted crown swap. Wow. It's a low opinion of three potions. I don't take that start very often. I mean, we've played many, many thousands of hours and... I picked it on stream, I think maybe twice, compared to hundreds of uh, Rare Relic and 250 Gold starts. Many Nyao's Lament starts, too. Nyao's Lament is perfectly fine, but I, I don't take three potions or the max health very often. I actually like the max health starts a lot more on lower difficulty, especially on Ironclad, where you can get plus 8 or plus 16 max health. Those are good. Those are really good. Glozny, thank you so much for the Prime sub and the 25 months. Appreciate you keeping it cozy for so long. Yeah, plus 16. So it, on Lower Ascension, where Ironclad starts with 80 base health, um, the, the small max HP bonus is a plus 10%, and the large one is a plus 20%. So if you don't have the initial max health penalty from Ascension, um, then you'll get plus 8 or plus 16 for the large bonus as your options. How's it going, Ed Shippard? Welcome to the stream. Is there a Nia bonus I think doesn't show up as often as the others? I don't think I would say that, no. Runic Pyramid Swap. And likewise, uh, silent. Normally, the small bonus is plus six, but if you're if you're playing on a a lower ascension, you'll get plus seven for the small bonus, which can be quite nice. Seventy-seven max health silent is pretty comfy. Normally, she's so frail. I'm used to going down to sixty max health because we we start on high ascension and we take a max health penalty in Act One. Definitely makes her less fragile against Act One elites. Um, and early Act 2 as well. So, currently we're on a 10 streak with the clad. Yesterday's run was pretty legendary. Um, a tight finish with Brimstone here. Took this in Act 2 and used it to absolutely slaughter just about everything. Killed the Book of Stabbing in 3 turns and 2 turns. So again, I'd, I'd like to retroactively point that out again. Everyone was kind of panicking at the time about the prospect of Book of Stabbing with Brimstone. But killing the Book of Stabbing on turn two means that the Brim Brimstone only added two damage to the Book of Stabbing. That's pretty much nothing. And simply by shaving a turn off of the fight, we saved more health than that by far. So I'd say we took probably substantially less damage to Book of Stabbing with the Brimstone than we would have without the Brimstone, which should be pretty telling as to how powerful this relic is. Pretty dang strong. Yeah, we're now halfway to the 20-streak 20, 20 goal that I set for myself, which seems absurd now in retrospect. Been doing a really good job of averaging around two hours per run. Might want to slow it down even a little bit more as we get into the double digits here, just to make sure we're making the right plays all the time.
How's it going? A dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Knox Frags. What does the ironclad do before a meal? He wet stones his appetite. No refunds. We're shot. Let's embark on a new journey here. So we could trade all of our gold for 14 max cell. That's kind of interesting, actually. Hmm. Interesting. Oh my. Okay, we've got a Hexaghost Act. Hexaghost have dang near killed us in the last clat run. That was the time. Oh, and I don't have to go to a shop. Interesting. Slay the Spire ever going to get an update again? No. Devs are finished with uh, Slay the Spire. There'll continue to be mods developed for this game, but nothing official from the devs. And given that the game is dang near perfect as it is, I'm 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 okay with that. I think it'd be really hard to add to Slay the Spire without compromising it somehow. Killer Sheep with a half a year of support. Thanks for the Prime sub. So we've got Transform... The Niao's Lament, 14 max health in exchange for our 99 gold, which is, uh, it's okay. Or the boss swap. Hexaghost Act boss swap, I don't totally dislike. I see that there is a double fire route here. Hmm. Interesting possibilities by far. 14 is a lot of max health. I do like the idea of having 89 max health leaving Act 1 here. Although it could discourage us from taking the Golden Idol, for example, and that could be awkward. I think you could get away with a boss swap in this position. I would also be extremely happy with the transform. Uh, looking at the path here, my initial choice of path would probably be something like this. Assuming we don't take the no gold start, then we can have enough money at this shop to buy an additional relic. So we can get an upgrade and brute force our way through the first elite. Then we get a relic, buy a relic, get a relic, fight another elite. That sounds like a fun sequence of events to me. It's possible for us to get a one hit point elite here, right? We could have first combat... Actually, no. Er, yeah, here here we go. One combat. Shop, event, second combat. Event, upgrade, elite. Is that worth using the Niaz Lament on? I really doubt it. I really, really doubt it. I think I would much rather have a transform than do that. Do I expect the run lengths to slow down as I go higher in streak? Yeah, I just briefly mentioned, I'd like to get closer to two and a half hours average from the two hours average we've done so far. Z Visionless, thanks for the eight months of support. Have I heard of or played Twilight Imperium? Yes, I quite enjoyed uh, Twilight Imperium. I've, I've gotten very few opportunities to, to actually play a sit down game of Twilight Imperium with other players. It is a lengthy and complex game. And so just getting enough people together to that want to do that can be really, really, really challenging, but quite a delightful um, in-person sort of space 4X game. Really well done. And uh, I quite like the sort of initiative system that game has where the players act in an order that's determined by what role they pick for the round, leading to some really interesting decisions. How long do I think my runs will end as up as we start approaching the triple digits in the streak? I think that as we get to a hundred streak, our runs will asymptotically approach infinite length, such that I will never ever reach a 100 streak because I will play an infinitely long Slay the Spire run at a 99 streak. So alas, we will never get there, I'm afraid. No, Nox Regs. I haven't owned a uh, Nintendo console since the N64, actually. I, 
I've also played Arkham Horror. I thought Arkham Horror was pretty good. Twilight Imperium is way more my speed than Arkham Horror. A Blitz Chess version of Spire. How long can you streak with a very short timer to clear the heart? I, I, I think I would really enjoy that kind of play. Hmm. So considering our options here, I think I am leaning towards Transform. With Hexaghost at the end of the act and three elites coming up, do I ever transform and defend here? Keep my five strikes. Or would we always transform a strike on Clad? Hmm. It's actually a good question. Does that mean I've not played Metroid Prime? Alas, that does indeed mean I've not played Metroid Prime. Jorbs runs uh, RNG Fix, Quinto Bean. Jor Jorbs is actually the reason I decided to install RNG Fix. Hmm, any spooky themed games I really enjoyed? Does Bloodborne count? Bloodborne was pretty good. Inscription had a spooky vibe, uh, at least to the beginning. I won't spoil anything for Harry Hose, though. My favorite FromSoft game? I think it has to be Elden Ring, quite frankly. It was the original Dark Souls for a very long time, but I think I give it to Elden Ring now. Lots of people chiming in with um, good games that would qualify as spooky, but I have not played. I think pretty firmly entrenching my dislike of the genre as a whole. <laughs> so, yeah, Resident Evil games, Dead Space, all that stuff. Nope, never touched it. Have I tried Shogun Showdown? Yeah, we were, at, we were sponsored to play the initial demo of that. Uh, and I think I'll be playing it again when it does a full release. The Subnautica count. Yeah, that's Subnautica is a game that I enjoyed and was terrifying. That's true. But it's a different kind of terrifying. Anyway, so as far as decisions go, again, Transform versus Max Health. Max Health gives us more HP to brute force through Elites this act. I really don't like giving up the gold all that often. That's part of the reason I don't take the Max Health starts all that often, is because the good downside is minus Max Health. So the big Max Health up is being paired with a downside you don't want, losing your gold, which I want to spend on a Relic this act, or a good card for killing Hexaghost. Um, getting a Curse is usually unacceptable. Or if you take the damage, then you're negating the benefit of the max health. Outer Wilds can also be kind of scary. That's true. I'm going to go with the Transform. So the, again, the only question then to, before me here is Transform, Strike, or Defend. Keeping an extra Strike can help quite a bit against the Elites, although I might argue against Sentries that the Defend is slightly better. Definitely against Gremlin Ob, we want to have the extra Strike. Hexaghost being primarily a damage ray says we probably also want to get rid of a defend. Early combat say probably transform a strike. Transform bash into an uppercut. Now you're thinking. I'm going to transform a defend here. It's my least favorite of those options. Uh, probably the boss swap, at least in this position. I'm going to transform Defend into Whirlwind. Okay. Spicy. 
I like that. Whirlwind is a powerful AoE offensive option. Good candidate for a first upgrade. Um, and will help in a lot of fights. It's also an X cost attack, meaning that if you draw Whirlwind and a whole bunch of skills, you can still spend your entire turn attacking, which is pretty heckin' sweet. Although next turn is looking like it might not be sweet. It was sweet. Okay, so we just double defend here. Classic ironclad cultist fight where you take two and then heal for six. Definitely love to see it. Yeah, we're much better at sentries now. <laughs> hmm. Fascinating. Into Chemex here. Now we take, uh, with Hexaghost at the end of the act, we want to take a Blood for Blood here, surely. Blood for Blood gets cheaper each time we lose health during the combat and does a ton of damage. I'm not going to ignore an early Blood for Blood. Maybe should not have lost the defend after all. That's true, but that's only because we're high rolling our card rewards here. If we were low rolling these, we'd be very happy we transformed the defend. Blood for Blood or Carnage in general? Ooh, tough call. How's it going, Cleric? So we can lose a strike here? That is pretty sweet. We don't have to go to this shop. Although I was planning on maybe purchasing a relic. Having a, a leg up in quarter move does feel really good. And given that we got rid of a defend, I really do want to lose a strike too. Yes, I am Corey. Baylorbot reads information from my Slay the Spire save game file, so it provides up-to-date informational commands on things like what our Niao bonus was, what our boss relic options were, um, stuff like that. It's all automatically updated. Very cool. I'll take the card remove, but I might regret this. Cleric talented. Have... A good day. Oh ho, whirlwind turn one, let's do it. Give him a blip and a blap. Although, wait, is it better to actually just bash strike? Not guaranteed to draw three strikes. We might. Getting rid of the little guy seems good, because then we do 15... If we draw three strikes, 15 plus 18 is 33, right? So yeah, we just whirlwinds. Correct. 15, 18 is 33. So if I draw three strikes, we just finish the fight. And if I don't, then we weren't going to either way. But we do. So we're out of this fight with full HP, thanks to Whirlwind. People have asked me in the past, when do you take a Thunderclap? This is an acceptable time to take a Thunderclap. It's great with Whirlwind. And I like that it can set up Vulnerable for the Blood for Blood. You can also just take a Twin Strike here. Twin Strike is perfectly fine. Do I agree that 99% of the time it is not acceptable to take a Thunderclap? Mostly. I, I often find that taking Thunderclap lets you get away with not having an upgraded Bash or anything like that. So it's, it's a nice little Vulnerable Extender. And it, it scales damage quite nicely with strength. So if, if you have tons of strength, uh, Thunderclap can be a good way to get Vuln. Thunderclap's upgrade is just three more damage, which still does make it a decent upgrade because you want to make your AOE cards hit harder. It's also a nice artifact removing card. And I do like, again, the more consistent Vulnerable, especially for Hexaghost. Let's grab it. Let's see how Thunderclap performs today. I think that Twin Strike would be mediocre anyway, so... Let's, let's take the card that theoretically pairs with Whirlwind here and see how it goes. Very happy with a Power Potion. Now we definitely get to Blood for Blood upgrade going into the Elite here because we can use the Power Potion to make Sentries even easier. Um, but I would like to find a better potion for the other elite here. So let's face down the Jawworm. Oh no, Jawworm, don't hit me. Don't make my cards cheaper. 
that would truly be a bad thing. Hilariously, though, it's better to play Thunderclap Strike Strike than it is to play Blood for Blood. That only deals 18, whereas Thunderclap Strike Strike deals 22. And then we're going to get slapped. Thankfully, only 12. Acceptable, I think. You're going to block 5, which means Thunderclap Strike Strike would kill. Okay. If we don't draw that, unfortunately, next turn could be bad. Thankfully, we do draw it. We've already verified that this is 22, so we have just enough damage. This Thunderclap has played pretty well. Um, although one could easily argue Twin Strike would be just as good in both situations where Thunderclap did 22. Thunderclap's uh, Twin Strike plus Strike Strike also deals exactly 22, so... You could argue, at least in this fight, an identical performance to a Twin Strike. Although, crucially, the Twin Strike does the same damage regardless of draw order, and can do even more if you line it up with Bash. Whereas the Thunderclap needed a good draw order to deal that damage. Could take another one. I guess I don't totally hate Iron Wave, given that I'm down to defend. I do want cards that help us against the elites of Act 1, and Iron Wave qualifies. I'm not taking a second better clap. We're still looking for ways to scale. I wonder if I need this Power Potion for Hexaghost more than I need it for the elites. Hmm, we'll think on that. We did get another potion, so maybe I just want to go directly into the elite now. Unless I think this is not good enough for Gremlin Knob. With an upgraded Blood for Blood, though, I think it is good enough for Gremlin Ub. Rather have double heal hook than double thunderclap. Wow, that's quite a statement. Look, we're going to get a um, champ belt. It'll be fine. This potion might be our Hexago solve. We're not going to that uh, shop, because I'm too poor. Unless the Elite drops an old coin, of course. Okay, let's take an event here. Six whoopers, thanks for the Prime sub and the 21 months. All that all that deliberation, it ends up being a fight anyway, of course. Of course. Thunderclap Strike is still better than two strikes, I guess. Here's where Twin Strike would be a lot better. Not all that good in this fight. I wonder if this is a good use of the Essence of Steel. That way there's a... I mean, there's a 30% chance we'd have to discard it and pick up the new potion anyway. Let's just use it here. Sure for getting turn three attacked. Let's play the whirlwind for if I play the whirlwind for five, actually we bring him to seventeen. That way we guaranteed kill next turn, um, and we heal all the damage we just took. So I think that's perfect. No potion. Do I get offered a shockwave? But what about flex? Flex is also quite strong here, giving us strength just for one turn. Helping us deal quite a bit more damage. Path marking for the viewers. Yes, uh, that that's what we do at 4 Delta. I, I use the path marking to communicate to stream where I'm planning on going. It also, it's nice to remind myself sort of of where I'm going to. But primarily done for viewers, for sure. And yes, Death Roll, I am indeed favoring Iron Wave a little bit early on. Yeah, Flex Whirlwind is a thing. So is Shockwave Whirlwind, though. Twin Strike would also be better with Flex. Well, actually, Thunderclap can be really good with Flex. Depends on the fight. If I'm fighting three enemies, then Thunderclap is better with Flex than Twin Strike is. My ironclad runs basically always want a shockwave. J guy, thanks for 38 months, all the love.
I might argue that this flex is better against Hexaghost than the Shockwave is. Either way, we're upgrading Blood for Blood first, right? Then probably Whirlwind. I'd have to not upgrade Whirlwind. Alright, I'll take the Shockwave. I don't have to upgrade the Shockwave. Hopefully this is Legavulin. Easy game. We want to do Shockwave Strike, deliberately wake up the egg right now, so that I can take advantage of both weak turns. And we want to get hit for a little bit here, so that the blood for blood is nice and cheap when we see it again. So I don't think Shockwave pass, I think Shockwave wake up. We've got all the block of the draw pile too, all of it. So yeah, let's wake up right now. Go for Broke with Whirlwind too much. Yeah, for this fight specifically, uh, as well as the Gremlin Ob, we really need the upgraded Blood for Blood rather than the upgraded Whirlwind. Against the Sentries, we also have the backup of the Power Potion, so I'm less afraid of them. I'll take five here. And then probably Thunderclap Defend Defend. We'll see what the draw is next turn. The idea here is to get this Blood for Blood. Oh man, we drew it? Ew. All right, just play it then. 33 damage. I guess we get to defend, then we'll bash probably next turn. If we redraw into Blood for Blood, we might have a chance. As it stands, I'm not sure. Maybe we need to just Thunderclap here. That'll do six more damage, and we get Vuln for next turn. That means if we bottom deck bash, we don't miss out on a ton of damage. I think we should probably Thunderclap rather than taking five, or th rather than blocking for five. Because the Blood for Blood will only do 30 damage next time we see it, probably. Actually, guaranteed it'll only do 30 damage next time we see it. So we have to do another 34 here. Make that happen. And in fact, we did not draw Bash, so that was a very important Thunderclap. If we redraw the Blood for Blood, we kill. If we don't, it's gonna hurt. What do I mean by bottom deck bash? I mean exactly what just happened, where bash was the bottom card of the draw pile, and therefore we saw it a turn later than we needed it. Here it doesn't do anything we need. Oh boy. Uh, and we're still not guaranteed to draw blood for blood. That's bad. Why is Lagavulin named after a whiskey, says Frinkle Star. The way I've heard the story is that during Spire's development, all of the enemies had placeholder names, which were alcohols. And then they filled in all of, the, all of the names gradually with the real names of the enemies, except for this one, which they decided to keep as the placeholder. So let's see, what's our worst draw next turn? Defend, defend, strike, strike, whirlwind does... 4 plus 4 plus 3. Only 11 damage. Is there any way that I can do 20 damage this turn? There's no way, right? What if I were to bash? Then it would be 6 plus 6 plus 4. Knob was Hennessy, says Buzzbull Blum. I don't know any of the other placeholder names, so I can't verify how true this is or is not. We do 16 next turn. Let's see, if I bash strike this turn, we deal 12. 12 plus 16 is only 28. So we pretty much need to draw the blood for blood, is what I'm seeing here. Which will do 20. Sounds like I probably have to bash one way or the other. Take another 17 here. Could gamble on a corruption. I don't think that would do much for us, though. 
And like I said, this power potion is to be preserved for either sentries or hexagos, preferentially. So I think it's going to be Bash Iron Wave. And then we... Let's see, if we draw three strikes, we can do 18. It's still not enough, right? 12 plus 18 is only 30. Yeah, so we always have to draw the Blood for Blood. Let's just hope that happens. Did I Thunderclap, Iron Wave, Strike? That would deal 2 plus 4 plus 6. This is 12, and then Blood for Blood would kill next turn. I guess that's kind of equivalent to Bash Iron Wave, though. Let's go Bash Iron Wave. I don't see any way to block for 6, is what I was trying to figure out there. Aw, oh, man. We don't get the Blood for Blood, so we do have to take another 17 here. Unless we want to use this Power Potion. It's a bummer. This Blood for Blood would have saved us if only we'd drawn it at the correct times, but... That really hurts. This, this fight could have been so much easier. The only thing that the Power Potion could give us would be... I guess it could be either Inflame or Combust. Is there anything else? I don't think so. Unfortunately, the next fire is located behind another Elite, which sucks big time. How much does Whirlwind do here? 12 damage. Juggernaut would not get a kill. Can we block and still kill next? I mean, we could block for three out of 20. That's not blocking. Have you thought about drawing better? I sure have. Yeah, had I known this was the draw order, I would have just used the power potion turn one. But I didn't know we we're going to bottom draw the bash and then bottom draw the blood for blood. You might end up going to this shop to buy another potion. Let's see, there's too many powers for this to be worth it. I think we keep the potion, just take the 17. Call it a bad day. And look for ways to recover from this situation. Stings a bit, but we do get a strike dummy. Ah oh, man, twin strike come back. Dupe pot. There's the juggernaut. I'm not going to say no to a second win, that's for sure. Okay, with two potions, we can continue on this path, although I'm a little worried about the fight. Pretty typical results uh, from Legavalin, though, honestly. Chemokinesis works really well with the Blood for Blood and is definitely going to help us get through the next three fights and Hexagos too. Yeah, we should probably take Chemokinesis. Huge damage. Easily takes advantage of either Shockwave or Thunderclap and makes the Blood for Blood cheaper. Yeah, we should take this. Okay. Probably going to have to rest of this fire, but I think we'll be okay until there. Another thing Chemokinesis can do is deal with Lice pretty easily. Hmm, probably Shockwave, Iron Wave. If they're all Vuln, I think the Whirlwind kills them all. Pretty sure. Look at this one with 16 health here. Hopefully this is an easy heal. Oh yeah, the Strikes do more damage than I think they do as well. Not bad. Well, not good, though. Whirlwind would have been good. This is merely acceptable. We do what? Hemokinesis, defend, thunderclap? Could have been better. We do bash, defend, take five. Hemo, defend, thunderclaps also take five. Chemo Blood for Blood. Don't defend is take six, so I don't want to do that. 
bash Hemo. Take four. No, that's not how that works. That's also take six. Don't forget the Hemo does two damage to you. So yeah, our take five is our best then. Which is going to be Hemokinesis, Defend, Thunderclap. Kill this guy. Okay, we're up a little bit of health. We do get a Flex Potion. Yeah, I should have just used this freaking Power Potion. Life could have been a lot easier. That said, we now have a Flex Pot and a Dupe Pot, which is pretty good. We also have Combust to go with our Blood for Blood, which I quite like. Combust does damage to every enemy every turn. You can also maybe think about Seeing Red here with the Shockwave and the Blood for Blood and the Bash and the Whirlwind. But yeah, Rupture, Rupture I would not take here for the most part. Although it could be a way to do okay against Hexaghost. I'd much rather take Combust and just bring uh, Blood for Blood down to zero cost as quickly as possible. And then once we have a Combust, we can take a Rupture. As a general reminder, burns do activate Rupture, but only if you don't block them. Ooh, that's pretty good. Play three attacks in one turn to gain four block. That will definitely help with the Iron Wave. Good with Blood for Blood. Good with the Duke Pot, too. And this fight should be nice and easy. I think just defend Shockwave, turn one. Flex Pot into Whirlwind would kill them all. How's the search for Clumsy going? Long done, Foxy. Uh, let me see. We have a command for that, right? Exclamation point Clumsy. Yeah, yeah, there it is. There's the full, uh, full run. But we did it. We totally did it. I know, Shift. The, 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 the amount of health we could have in hindsight here is kind of embarrassing. Uh, against, given, given how that Legavulin fight went. We didn't know we were going to low roll the fight and then high roll the potions. So trying to save the potion was a huge misplay in retrospect. But we had no way of knowing that at the time. I do think I should consider using a potion here on this turn. This turn is a little ugly. We can dupe pot. It's a tempting option. Yeah, hindsight is undefeated for a reason. But yeah, without the foreknowledge, I don't I don't think I would consider what we did a misplay, necessarily. That's an ideal amount of health to take into Hexaghost. Usually I, I like to have around 30-ish. More than that is unnecessary, less than that is dangerous. Ideal is is as much as possible, usually still. We can also dupe the Iron Wave, but then we deal less total damage. I'd rather take one to make the Blood for Blood cheaper and deal more damage. I like that more than the Flex Pot. We could also, what, defend Iron Wave, Thunderclap? That's not a thing. That would take 10. That would take 10, then we Flex Pot to win the fight. Maybe. Or I can keep the Flex Pot. Probably am going to rest here as expected. All right, I will potion. Thirteen 
plus 22. Take the damage. Do I skip combust? I think I do, actually. Easy peasy. Kunai! Okay, fan and kunai. Fascinating. And Dark Embrace. Hmm. Just got through the fight where the Dark Embrace would actually help. It's a hindrance in the short term. Do kind of want it, though. Yeah, Whirlwind really nice with these. Now we want zero-cost attacks. <sighs> I can't believe I was... Well, we did need that hemokinesis. I can't believe we didn't take second wind, is how I feel right now. Do we die to Hexaghost if we take Dark Embrace, though? I'm not sure. Probably want to go two more combats rather than an event here to get more card rewards for Hexaghost. I think we take the Dark Embrace here and we replenish our resources off these fights. I'm going to take it, but I am going to sleep as well. Because we are currently being a little greedy, so we have to pair that with something that's not greedy. Resting. A hemokinesis, glad to see ya. This is an okay flex potion turn, as it would add 577-ish and have a really hard time doing better than that. So this is probably the best turn for Flexpot in this fight, if we think we need to. And then I get three potion chances for Hexaghost. That feels pretty good. Can't assume that much about our damage because there's a chance Blood for Blood's on the bottom here. All right, I'm going to just do it. What are the Ironclad Exclusive Potions? Those are the Blood Potion, the Elixir, and the Heart of Iron. So strike Steel 13, so I just need to draw one Strike to kill. Easy peasy. did get the blood for blood. So I think with this draw order, we might have been able to kill without using the flex potion, but again, there was no way to know that beforehand. Now we're offered rupture. However, what about anger with kunai fan? Hmm. Both rupture and anger are very strong here. Chat thinking Anger solves the act. Does it though? Does it solve Hexaghost? It's a really good card with Dark Embrace, especially if we have these. This is definitely the better long-term card. Only one self-damage right now. We have Combust, so this is... Rupture is strength per turn. Fluffy Bullet, did you hear about the Ironclad that had too many attacks in his deck? He was sentenced to anger management. I do think I want this anger really badly. It's a very good card for Hexagos, too. Would I have taken Demon Form here? Yeah, I'd be taking... I'd probably be taking Demon Form. Does Prism give you access to potions from the other characters? No. It's Young King, thanks for the Tier 1 sub. Welcome to the Koozie Sub Club. We still get two more card rewards before Hexaghost here. Rupture is kind of like a demon form, but not really. 
needs to be upgraded to be a demon form. And even then, it's it might be a delayed demon form. I was anger better than rupture because it allows it allows our relics to scale us the kunai and the uh, fan. It's going to be very it's offense and defense at zero cost, which is really nice. Not sure if I would upgrade anger. Be a consideration before hexaghost. I have strike dummy. Anger begets anger. How much will we play combust later in this run? Really depends on what cards we find from here. Take anger. I'll admit, though, that uh, rupture is pretty good there. We still have some other options. This guy could ship quite a bit of damage. So here's an example of where Anger can be quite great. This anger here allows us to not quite kill, but does allow us to block with the ornamental fans. We take less damage, at least. Still no potion. Battle Trance is excellent. Draw three cards. You cannot draw more cards this turn. Great for getting the anger and the blood for blood back into our hand. Or we could just take, you know, the second blood for blood. But yeah, we want Battle Trance for sure Z's here. We see Rupture again. Do we take it? Yeah, so we take it the second Rupture once we have the uh, the anger for sure. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, dear. This is really bad. <laughs> What a draw, turn one. If we'd only drawn the freaking Whirlwind, of course, we'd have this no problem, but now we're searing down disaster. We could kill the wizard turn one, but then we're taking 15 damage immediately. The part that's really bad here is that the Sneaky Gremlin rolled 14 health, so it doesn't die to one strike. We have to use two strikes to kill the Sneaky Gremlin. Next turn, they won't be vulnerable and will be weakened. So our damage output falls miserably starting next turn. I think we still have enough damage that I can kill the wizard on turn three. I feel like I have to kill the sneaky gremlin turn one here. Definitely, definitely a case of Dark Embrace hurting us. Although we could have just as easily drawn uh, Ascender's Bane here, right? And had the same opening hand. Or I could draw a third defend, and that's no better either. Of course, we still have to draw that third defend and the Ascender's Bane. Wizard attacks on turn three. I'm thinking we go double strike. If I double strike defend, then blood for blood's only two cost, huh? Hmm. Does it ever kill one of the fat gremlins? I still only take damage one time if I block for five. Do I have to not play a defend on purpose? Kill the sneaky gremlin, don't play a defend. Feels weird. My question, Juice for Zeus, if I'm aiming to kill the wizard on turn three, then why would I kill the, ch the chunky gremlin first? I should kill the sneaky gremlin first in that case.
could spread out damage for Whirlwind, but then you're looking at taking a ton of damage right now. Like, any line that doesn't kill the Sneaky Gremlin right now is taking at least 15. You're on turn one. They don't love. Though I do kind of like the idea of splitting damage for Thunderclapper Whirlwind. There's also no assurance we draw either of these next turn, although we have three AoE sources. We're very likely to get one of them next turn. This is where Frozen Eye would be really helpful. <laughs> so I'm leaning double strike here, huh? Ornamental fan's gonna help me save health on future turns. Yeah, let's go double strike. Don't play a defend. We need to make sure the blood for blood is cheap. Where's the whirlwind believers now? We at least get thunderclap, iron wave, anger. We're not guaranteed to get blood for blood, but we are guaranteed to get either hemo or whirlwind at least. Did not bottom deck the other thing. Um, so we can calculate our minimum damage next turn. Do Strike Iron Wave Anger. This is 10, 6, 5. So I think we want to kill one of the Fat Gremlins this turn. Do the 6 damage to the wizard, bringing it to 17. Next turn, we're weakened. How much is Shockwave into Hemokinesis? 15 times 0.75 times 1.5 is 16. 16. Anger plus Iron Wave, 6 plus 5 does not kill you. If I play Strike instead of Iron Wave, Strike, Strike, Iron Wave, we do 10 damage, we take one. That gives me the guaranteed kill next turn. So yeah, let's just take one more. Stinky Iron Wave. You're one lower, actually no, not one lower. The fact that you don't stay Strike is the reason you suck here. I'll kill this front guy. Here it comes. Here's our blood for blood. All right, we get them both. We get them both. Although I have to hemokinesis one more time. Um, can I combust whirlwind? That's five plus six. That's not enough. We have to hemo. Thirty-one hit points. Second battle trance is here. Curious. I don't hate Metallicize going into Hexaghost, but I don't feel like it's helpful. I have Dark Embrace. I don't really want another Battle Trance, do I? Didn't get a potion. That's actually a little concerning. Kind of feeling like I should have taken that Rupture, given what we got here. Hmm. That means we definitely need to spend our upgrade on something that helps us in the Hexaghost fight. Which is going to be either Shockwave or Anger. Maybe the Battle Trance for more draw. Maybe I should take a second Battle Trance. Just because it helps us against Hexaghost specifically. Yeah, we need help in Hexaghost specifically. We should take the second Battle Trance. Do you take Thorn's damage when playing Wallop? Yes, but you get the block first.
Yeah, having long-term Voln against Hexaghost is pretty valuable. Although we have the Thunderclap for Voln extending. No, we don't need to upgrade Shockwave because we have the Thunderclap. So I think we take the second Battle Trance and upgrade Anger. Although you could also argue for Hemokinesis upgrade of plus five. Chucklesfish says, any advice for facing Time Eater? Couple pieces of advice. Um, you don't have to play every card that you have against the Time Eater. Just playing your most impactful cards each turn is often the, the better strategy. Do I regret picking this Thunderclap over Twin Strike? Definitely, but that's because we got the Strike Dummy. This Whirlwind has been garbage. Uh, also, if you know you're going into Time Eater um, and you have kind of card spammy cards, Blade Dances or Escape Plans or a Flash of Steel or anything like that that just isn't that impactful. Any card that does less than 10 total stuff when you play it is usually not worth it. So lots of powers and two cost cards is, is a good strat for Time Eater. If you know you're facing Time Eater ahead of time, as your, your boss preview does tell you at the start of Act 3, then you can remove useless cards from your deck, like an Infinite Blades or a Blade Dance or stuff like that, a Double Tap, uh, so that you don't have that burden during the Time Eater fight. And yes, always keep, keep an eye on that timer. Never, ever leave the timer on 11, or you will suffer. You will big time suffer. I think this is getting played more than Hemokinesis. I have to believe that these are the right picks. I'm definitely worried. I really wish we had this power potion, but the potions came at the wrong time here. Just gonna get the Dark Embrace in play. It'll draw us two cards, which helps us get to the Angers faster. We're only missing out on 14 damage here, and we won't redraw the... Actually, it's more than two draws, because we also don't redraw the Dark Embrace. So let's definitely, definitely play Dark Embrace turn one here. Which gets me Shockwave this turn. Good. We don't need to put Combust in play immediately, although we do appreciate the damage over time. Because this multi-attack will immediately make our Blood for Blood free. Looks like we've drawn the Battle Trances together. That's not the worst thing in the world. If I just play Combust here, we're taking too much damage, right? We take 12, go to 19. We're losing one per turn at that point. I don't love that. But I do love the damage it deals. This is definitely a race. Hmm. We could also play Thunderclap here, 6 damage, and keep the Vuln going. Just a bit longer. We can play Bash next turn. Next turn we do Anger, Blood for Blood, Bash. Unless it's both Battle Trances and the Bash on the bottom, which is really unlikely. Does Vulnerable affect the damage from Combust? It does not. We still take three hits by playing Iron Wave. Actually four, right? We take... 0, 0, 1, 2, 2. So yeah, we take four hits. This is free. Yeah, are we in danger of dying to the 9 by 2 by not blocking here? I think we are. I think we should play the Iron Wave. I think we need those hit points. Yeah, I did not bottom deck. That's good. We could skip playing the Battle Trance entirely here so that we can Battle Trance next turn. Is that good? We do have double Vulnerable Strike next turn. Maybe I should do that since we got all the cards. Yeah, let's do it. Three. We still have defend though. Oh no, we have one energy. No, I should play Battle Trance and play a strike here. Should not waste our energy. Get Battle Trance again immediately. Okay, so the second Battle Trance was not uh, that useful, unfortunately. It's okay. 
can either strike for 13 or play the combust. I think we're taking six. We're well on track for damage here, it looks like. Although that nine by two coming up is still a little bit spooky. So let's see, we go to 18 here. That's right, there's a nine by two coming up. And I might want to play Hemokinesis. This is definitely cutting it close. We can just do 13 anyway. Realistically, the worst case scenario during the 9x2 is we draw a burn, three attacks, so we'll take 20 minus 4, 16. So I want to have 16 health. This is too much damage. Stupid combust. Okay, we can never break draws. Seven damage for two HP. Hmm. Now we're, we're gonna make it under the timer easy, as long as we don't die early. Let's just hold block this. Okay, this is good. Definitely play this Hemokinesis. We know we're blocking a lot. And it gives us a uh, kunai too, so we eff effectively get a one hit point refund here. Yeah, we were okay on Vulnerable, but it's, it's only because we could play the Bash multiple times, and we could only do that because our main damage card costs zero. With uh, If we were playing with Carnage or something similar, we wouldn't have been okay on Vulnerable. But here's the kill. We're through this act. I gotta say, I was a little scared going into the Hexagos fight. There's that Power Potion, um, such that we made a weird deck. We definitely made a weird deck. Um, I would love to now, like, remove Combust and Battle Trance. But uh, we have what we have. And you know what? Double... Uh, double Battle Trance with Fiend Fire actually seems kind of hype. And Dark Embrace with, with Fiend Fire also seems kind of hype. Karen DDD says, lost a few times to Silent with Pocket Watch Starting Relic. I don't know how to scale it. Poison is probably the easiest way. Bouncing Flask, Crippling Cloud, Catalyst, Leg Sweep, well Aid Plans, Footwork, Dodge a Roll, Wraith Form, Caltrops. All your offensive options are going to be skills and powers, primarily. Dash is an okay attack card. Predator is an okay attack card. Juggernaut with the fan is kind of cute. Definitely want the upfront attack, though. This is great. I mean, on turn one, if we draw Battle Trance with Bag of Marbles, Fiend Fire can just outright destroy something. Happy to take a Fiend Fire here. Show me the good stuff for boss relics. This run could get really easy or really hard from here. What are our options? Hmm. Hard then, huh? Well, I said I wanted to remove Battle Trance Combust. I guess I can, right? <laughs> hmm. Cube is pretty terrible here. Unfortunately. Cube cube Combust is not a combo. It's a non-bow. Because uh, Combust occurs at the end of your turn. You draw the card, you discard the card. In fact, it can discard really important cards. Causing you to, for example, go through an entire deck cycle without ever getting to see the Dark Embrace. Uh, and that can be a lose condition, which is something you don't want to put into your deck usually. A particular draw order that just makes you lose. This would be a distressing Sozu, but not the worst one in the world, I suppose. This deck would love more energy. And at least the Power Potion is good for the endgame. Happy with a Power Potion into heart.
And I would still like having two battle trances most of the time. Remove blood for blood and hemo. For the streak, do we need to beat the heart? Yes. Do I think I can keep the power potion until heart? I think I can, yeah. The Whirlwind says take the Sozu. The Dark Embrace says take the Sozu. The Ornamental Fan and the Kunai say take the Sozu. I guess I'll take the Sozu. Maybe we'll get Pyramid after Champ. Other option is we could maybe use the Power Potion to try to get through Champ alive. I would hope to not have to resort to that, but you know how it goes sometimes. The good news is I do like the overall layout here in Act 2. Shops and fires are positioned generously. The elites aren't too badly positioned. No forced early elite with no fire, for example. Appreciate it, Jingo. Already an hour into the Act 2 here, huh? We have slowed down a bit. That was a tough fight. I'm wondering if we go to this shop versus this shop. I guess we can go a path like this. With, uh, don't have to go to the second elite either. Although, if we want to get the fire, we do. Also, don't have to go to the first elite, I guess. That would mean taking three events, which is... Eh, iffy. This deck would take... Mutagenic Strength, if offered. Super take Mutagenic Strength. And then Fire or another shop, maybe. This is an okay path. Would we take Bites? I love Bites with Kunai Fan, so probably. Bites are also pretty cool with Blood for Blood. And uh, Bites are also very nice with Sozu, in my opinion. So oftentimes... I consider the potions to be the sort of disaster reduction of the deck. They fix matchups that you can't win or solve bad draws. If you have a different solution to the same problems, you don't need the potions anymore. Pretty good block, actually. was upgraded. That hurts. That's a very bad first fight, unfortunately. The good news is we can afford to rest several times this act if we need to. Definitely another fight where the Dark Embrace punished us. However, we can take a Burning Pact or another Blood for Blood Plus, both of which are powerful options here. I think we just want a Burning Pact, because the more often you can draw the one Blood for Blood that you have, the better. Whirlwind, one time, please, for the love of heck. Just show up, okay? That's all I need. I need Whirlwind to show up. Next turn. We get to draw six. I didn't draw the Battle Trances together. I can also draw Fiendfire, I guess. Please. Please, game. It was the draw from the Dark Embrace that got us there, too. Let's do Thunderclap Whirlwind. All flights are grounded. This would have been a miserable turn without the Sozu providing that extra energy. Finally a good fight. I think. Immediately takes damage. No, it's fine. Good. Some hit points back. 
unfortunately, we don't get that potion. Twin Strike is here. It's pretty good damage, thanks to Strike Dummy. This is 8 damage twice, so it's super plus. Cards in the game do I think get significantly better on lower ascensions? Claw does. Hello World does. Pretty much any slow powers like Infinite Blades or Demon Form, Barricade. Anything that scales with your number of turns, really, because you get more turns on lower difficulties. more garbage to my deck, though. That is the question. Garbage that does immediate damage. Is that good enough reason to include it? I don't think so. I think a Twin Strike Plus, though. Hmm. Duplicate a card in your deck. What if I did want two Blood for Blood Pluses? What then? one of our only upgraded cards. I'm not going to upgrade an unupgraded Dark... Ah, I'm not going to dupe an unupgraded Dark Embrace or take a third Battle Trance. We could take a second Fiend Fire. That's okay. But I think it's going to be the Blood for Blood, genuinely. Or a second Burning Pact is an interesting option. And then we just burn the entire deck down as quickly as possible. Tough choice, actually. Wish we had an offering. Second pact is nice for the late game. I like having another blood for blood. Instinct says dupe the upgraded card for me. <laughs> Potions? It's rude. <laughs> Why you do this to me, game? Why do you torment me so? Potions! This is a little bit rude, not too rude. Wish I could play three attacks. It's definitely a, a situation where the second Blood for Blood is not helping, of course. But they'll be helping later! Or some such. Uh-oh. Oh no. But my face, sir. You must cease your assaults. Now the lady's attacking me too. We can do Iron Wave, Anger, Fiend Fire. That would block for enough. Finger slipped on the end turn button last uh, turn there, by the way. I could have played one more card, but I did not. I'm gonna slow down a bit. Okay, so let's do Thunderclap. Anger. Strike. Whirlwind. Get rid of that stinky knight. And then double blood for blood. Absolutely slaps once we draw back into them. True Grit with the Dark Embrace in the deck is pretty good. Scales with the Kunai too. Give me that. Wish I could afford to upgrade it, but we're going to definitely take a sleep here. Why dupe Burning Pack when you could just have another one for 43 gold to a chat? Unfortunately, the shop is not that good. We were hoping for a bit more impact. I would say we did not get there. 
strange spoon could allow us to keep cards that exhaust. Currently, that applies to Shockwave and nothing else. And Flame could be okay. A little bit of strength definitely helps with the damage scaling. Although, I don't think we need it, actually. Uh, it's a detriment against Champ, very notably. Bad against Champ. Could buy the Singing Bowl. That's a lot of money to spend on the ability to gain max health, but it could be a lot of max health at the same time. I feel like we should maybe save the money and go to a later shop or something. Definitely going to remove a card here. Um, Bash can go? Bash can go. Yeah, I don't think it's worth spending 282 on this thing. Shrug's okay here, especially with, again, the... the the stuff. Now we could maybe lose one of our battle trances. That's also a valid argument here. I don't really feel the need to remove them outright, though. You can just use the Burning Pact on the battle trance if you don't want them. You don't have to play them. They are a perfectly fine exhaust target when they stop working. T-Set would be nice with Whirlwind if only the Elites were after Rest Sites in this act. They are not, and therefore the T-Set is doing not much. I don't even want this shrug. Oh boy. Hmm. Turn one Dark Embrace, huh? Thunderclap Combust doesn't kill you. So it's Blood for Blood Combust? Blood for Blood Combust seems okay. I don't like missing the Shockwave. Can't do Shockwave Blood for Blood. Yeah, it kind of has to be Blood for Blood Combust. Ugh. I don't like it. I'm wondering if we need to maybe power potion. Is this sufficiently bad? Have I reached 200 max health before? I have. I've gotten much more than that with a seated run. We did 453 is the, the record that I have yet to be. Death Punch Strong. Thanks for the Prime sub in the five months. Grats on finishing Monster Train 825 all, er, Covenant 25 All Crowns. I'm going to gamble on keeping this potion. I sure hope this is the right choice. Please summon some stuff. No, you're attacking me, huh? Great choice. You're gonna love what you've done. Alright, that hurts. Probably to the extent that we might not get to go to the next elite. We're in grave trouble now. Miserable from turn one. Dark Embrace, you have got to stop showing up like this. This freaking Blood for Bloods, man, but I, I can't take 10. We have to strike Bean Fire, I think. Although we can Burning Pact first. Okay, that's much better, actually. I 
could do Shockwave, Thunderclap, Anger. I want that Vuln. Or I can do, oh no, Thunderclap, Anger, Fiendfire on here is not enough. Yeah, I'm thinking Shockwave, Thunderclap, Anger looks good. And then we ho hopefully can rush for the kill with the double blood for blood in the draw file. No attack, thank you. Okay, I think we're fine now. If we got attacked here, I think we'd, we'd have just died, but we didn't, so we live. Spooky fight, though. Get the Paper Frog, making our vulnerable stronger. We're offered a barricade. It's also Cleave Plus. Definitely a struggle bus of a run. I think I'm going to take the honorable choice and just try to beat Champ here. I think it's the only reasonable option. Do we consider barricade? No, we have no way to get enough block for barricade, let alone put it in play. All we need to do is really just get the Dark Embrace down successfully. Makes our life a lot easier if we can do that. How do we beat Champ? We're going to beat Champ with two Burning Packs and two Blood for Bloods. It actually shouldn't be that hard. I will take one Strength because I'm desperate. Yeah, this is too risky. We could die turn one to Slavers. It's just no assurance. Is this sequence really less dangerous than one Elite? Hmm. When you put it like that... Maybe. We do get to a rest site here, right? This event could be the, the altar. That'd be really bad. If this event is altar, we're very hosed. Snake plant could definitely hurt us quite a bit. But more than Book of Stabbing? I don't know. Book of Stabbing seems pretty bad. Both Book of Stabbing and Slavers are very spooky fights. Avocado Rat is really bad, too. Yeah, Avocado Rat really hurts. Everything seems to be bad. Yeah, that's the, the current situation. Everything is bad. If I had a flex potion, I'd go for the elite, no problem. Stupid Sozu. There are some easy fights, though. I'm gonna go for the event here. Oh, hey, look, it's Avocado Rats. Excellent, just who I wanted to see here. Let's see, what's 14 by six? Oh, it's 84, you say? Well, that doesn't sound so bad. And here you're all panicking. We can kill this thing on turn one. Power of the paper frog here. All right, my question is... Can I do better? Can we do a fan block, for example? Hemo Hemokinesis Anger Feed and Fire might be better. Let's just take a quick look here. We've got 28. This is 15. So even Anger is better than Feed and Fire. So yes, that definitely kills then. Strike is also better then. So we can actually do Anger Strike Feed and Fire. Take two. There's no way we can do better than that, because anything that plays Hemokinesis takes two. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's take two. Let's verify. 14 times 4 is 56, right? Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah, we can't do that against Book of Stabbing, unfortunately. Wish we could, but we can't. Okay, we healed from that. I'd take an Iron Wave Plus, unironically, but I'm not going to take an unupgraded one. Okay, who's next? Finally, a Clash! Chosen plus Bird. And once again, we get Battle Trance turn one. Hell yeah. Emo, Blood for Blood, Anger, Iron Wave. Play all of it. Kill the Chosen, because the Chosen is freaking scary, man. And we can down the bird with Whirlwind or Fiend Fire. We can also just make it irrelevant with a Shockwave. Another fight where we heal four. So, two hallway fights. We've increased our hit points. Now we can take a shrug it off without paying for it. Which I will do. Okay, I'm feeling a bit better now. We might even be able to upgrade True Grit going into the champ here. This is more acceptable now. Although I still don't think we want to do it. These guys aren't bad. Finally, we can use Dark Embrace to actually do something. Or I can Whirlwind for a lot. Maybe I just do that. That would be... 40 damage to all of them? Yeah. Seems good. Spun to one. Plus six. Second wind is here. Or rupture plus. This looks like a second win to me, though. We have the Dark Embrace. We want the second win. It also scales incredibly with Kunai. Seeing Red is here, too. But I think it's second wind. Second wind is the late game powerhouse. So, quick reminder. How are we killing Champ? Step one, make both Blood for Bloods cost zero. Step two, play Dark Embrace. Step three, double Burning Pact. Equals play Blood for Blood, like... 10 times per turn. It's going to kill him real fast. Especially with Vulnerable, they do immense damage. Second win for sure. I, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. Could remove at the shop. Removes are very good. Currently, I'm upgrading True Grit. I'd like to also upgrade Dark Embrace. We don't need the shop to be champ. Okay, let's wait then. Minimum elites killed while still beating the heart. Great question. I think I've done as little as four. event. This could be really big. And it doesn't seem like combats are that much more helpful. Under what circumstances do I like to upgrade True Grit? When it's really important which card it doesn't exhaust. Sometimes you can just play the cards you don't want to exhaust first and then play True Grit, but 
Um, when we've got more important combos we're trying to pull off, it becomes more important to be able to choose the card that is getting exhausted. Hey, we got a relic. It's a frozen egg. Any future powers will say plus. Seems cool. So now we can either upgrade the Dark Embrace or upgrade one of our Burning Pacts. I do like the Burning Pact upgrade a lot. Upgrading Dark Embrace would let it get played at least one time. That's true. Yeah, the Dark Embrace upgrade lowers its cost from 2 to 1, which makes it much easier to play. Whereas the Burning Pact upgrades would be draw one more card each time we play it, which is kind of important for this champ fight. I think I'm going to upgrade a Burning Pact for this champ. Uh, and then either we'll have 5 energy and the 2 cost won't be that important, or I'll have something better and the 2 cost won't be that important. Kind of how I feel. Hopefully 43 health is enough. I'm not gonna play Combust in this fight. Guess I'm just gonna delete some garbage. Nice turn one with Telesize, champ. Okay, this is fine. Gonna need Thunderclap. Maybe this is not fine. Can't even get a Kunai proc, huh? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I think I do want to keep these. Telesizing, and then he's not attacking next turn either, so we can just Dark Embrace Shockwave. I'm gonna not play Anger yet. Of course, if he never attacks me, how am I going to get the Blood for Bloods to be cheaper unless I play the Combust? I guess we don't have that many turns left. We could think about playing it. Do combust, get rid of strike, keep the shockwave for now. Let's do that. We're not going to last that much longer in this fight anyway, right? Blood is free. Pack the Battle Trance, then. Blood for blood, blood for blood. Don't get him too low here. I felt for champ is 220. Get rid of Whirlwind next. Don't play this anger. Alright, now it's time to go. Burning Pact and Anger. I don't want too many of these.
Have a free shot. Oh, you're gonna regret that, champ. Oh, yes. Get rid of the other Battle Trance. Battle Trance is banned now. Is this enough? Hmm. Seems like the Angers are actively not contributing here. Concerning. Hmm. Maybe I should have deleted those earlier. Yeah, currently the deck is 12 cards, that's right. If I play them, I have way more things to draw into next turn, is my problem. Yeah, Rupture would have made this particular configuration work. I'm thinking I just shouldn't have played the Anger in the first place. And I should have uh, double Blood for Blooded as my damage source. Still might be able to get away with it, is the thing. Uh, how many cards do I actually have? I have draw four in my hand, and I have another, blood for bl uh, another Burning Pack to draw into, which is also draw four. I might also be able to block? Seems unlikely. So this would deal another 33. Bring champ just below 100. What are the odds I do 100 damage next turn? I'd have to draw into... Thunderclap. The odds I can redraw into these Blood for Bloods. Not that good. And yeah, he's getting even more damage. So I think we have to skip the, the, the Blood for Bloods. Or we have to try to draw back into Blood for Blood. Maybe I need to Power Potion then, depending on what this looks like. It's only 13 block, huh? Got seven in the draw pile. This draws three. Guess we burning packed an anger to start here, or we power potion if we're really, really, really scared here, which we kind of are. If we got a second Dark Embrace off the Power Potion, that would sort us here. Inflame could sort of help. Corruption would also be very good. Yeah, so Dark Embrace or Corruption both bail us out big time. And I think we're in a sufficiently bad situation. I guess I'm going to do that. Without knowing the exact draw order, I definitely could have saved this potion. That feels bad. I don't like doing this. Juggernaut, huh? Fortunately, they're not even any good. Juggernaut does deal additional damage. I guess we'll take it. See how this goes. Yeah, I was a bit worried about that. Okay, there's the Burning Pact. to revive this. Looks like we're just barely toast here. Guaranteed draw the second win. I can use second win to do a multi-block, right? Hmm. 
And that will also draw more stuff. All right, we guarantee draw all three of these plus one more skill. So second win always exhausts two skills, blocking for 11 twice. This is to 35. It's a little bit more. Not quite enough, huh? Um, so we block for 13 plus 4 plus... 22, which is 39. That's not quite enough. But then I get to proc fan another time afterwards, right? Hold on. So we have... 21 spare health plus... 13 plus 22 plus 4 plus 4 again, because we can replay. So we have 64. Two shorts. Son of a gun. That seems like just barely not enough. See a way to make it add up to enough. Blood for Blood only does 17 damage here. So it looks like we just barely die and we just barely don't kill. When at Burning Pack, Truget into Thunderclap, Blood for Blood, Anger, Anger. Count your energy, sir. That's three energy of cards. Lots of in incorrect suggestions, unfortunately, here, as usual. Many things that don't work. That's okay, that's why I'm the one playing here, but unfortunately I've, I've played myself into a hole. Uh, I'm pretty sure we could have won this if I'd thought my strategy through, I guess, a little bit more. I thought I needed the angers for kunai scaling, turns out I needed to get rid of them in order to make this deck work. Uh, I guess I'll save and quit and show how we can win this fight. Currently there's no way to win now, right? Second win does not block for enough, right? If we do blood for blood, blood for blood. Anger, second wind. We can't even proc the kunai again, actually. You can see this is not enough to survive. We did not deal enough damage. It's not enough. So, the, the streak is over at 10. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, but I do want to show that this was a super winnable champ fight. Without wasting my stupid potion, either. Yeah, just by getting rid of anger immediately this time. I do need the thunderclap in both blood for bloods. This turn was bad. That's part of why I panicked. Yeah, why did I even play anger? Where did this defend? Combust was not a wrong choice. I would do that again. Although now I have nothing to true grit, huh? Interesting. I guess deleting Shrug is not the worst thing. Let's 
turn do be awkward though. Definitely. Probably wants to be blood for blood, blood for blood, iron wave, huh? It's fine. We die more immediately with this line? Hmm. We should be fine. This burning pact. So yeah, thunderclap, iron wave, that's enough. Should get me here now. I was not expecting that. To say. Awkward. The whole deck does fit in my hand now, though. there though. Just cutting it a little close. It's fine. Well, maybe not that fine. If the second win, that would be death, would it not? That would be death. Huh. Oh, because I'm frail. I thought this would increase by one. Hmm. Seems like a problem. Unless you're telling me I can kill him next turn, which is maybe? I'm gonna find out. But we died to combust right now, so it better be a hell of a turn. Let's just say that. We don't have enough, huh? Okay. So this line didn't work either, actually. This gets a little closer. This is kind of what I was envisioning. I guess we probably don't play the combust maybe then to win, but either way, I couldn't find a way through this fight. GG Twitch chat. We come to an end at the face of champ here. I was hoping we'd be able to get through, but I couldn't find it. I could not find it with that uh, draw order. Draw orders were all over the place in this run. Definitely made for some tough times. But overall, I'm really happy with the 10 streak. That was a very good, indeed, warm-up streak. GG. GG, yeah. You can kind of say it was killed by Act 1. Definitely don't regret the Dark Embrace. I would take that again, and I think it would pay off. It was the only reason we were still in the game, quite frankly. Without the Dark Embrace, this deck is super dead to champ. Soul Macau, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Yeah, 10 Streak is pretty great. That's that's pretty hard to do. And that we did that on that was basically our third try, right? We had one or two false starts, but once we got going, we, we did a really good streak. So I'm very happy about that. I am very happy about that. Would the rupture have been good? Maybe the rupture could have let us get past champ in retrospect. Uh, I think the rupture, the rupture plus instead of the second wins, that might have done it actually. That second win was not as good as I was hoping, that's for sure. I really thought this was going to perform better against champ.
Realistically, unless there was a Runic Pyramid waiting behind Champ, I don't see this winning anyway. With Runic Pyramid, everything's different, but we were kind of waiting for, for help. Maybe a Corruption could have changed it. But yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled overall with that streak. There will be another streak with Clad. However, what I'm going to do today is play some of the other characters now. We have no streak, so let's just have some fun. I'll play uh, Silent and um, Defect next for today's stream. And I won't concern myself as much with whether they win or not. We'll just play and have fun. It'll be a wacky run or it'll lose quick. I don't really care. Should be a good time. Before that, however, I am going to take a quick break here. Twitch chat, refill the legs, stretch the water. Back in five or so minutes for some more Spire. I'll be right back.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Alas, Clad did perish, but that means we get to play some of the other characters now. Let's have some fun with uh, Silent and Defect here. Let's do it. Over the rare card choices in Act 1 on this Clad, it was uh, Fiendfire Juggernaut Barricade. A lot of things went wrong with this run, unfortunately. Just a little bit more help. We could have gotten a bit further, but certainly a struggle bus of a run. No, I'm not going to count these as part of any streak. I'm not playing in rotating fashion here. I, I don't plan to continue to play streak-like with these characters, so I don't really care if we win or lose here. 
Probably gonna go random rare relic. Zariku, thanks for the prime sub. Is every run winnable with perfect choices? Almost every run. There has been an impossible seed found. But I would say that the overwhelming majority of Spire runs can be won with whatever you might consider perfect choices. Although how easy those choices are to actually make is a different story. Watcher was developed after the keys system in the heart was uh, created, Nox Frags. At first, the game was just the watch, the Silent and the Ironclad. You had three acts, and the game ended after the Act 3 boss. Then they added the heart in Act 4. Then after that, the Watcher was added. All right, and Defect was before the heart. So, first it was... Silent Ironclad, then add Defect, then add Act 4, then add Watcher. And a, a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Lightly Rust. Did you hear about the Silent that created a new type of shovel? It's a groundbreaking invention. Alright, clearly we need to dig at every rest site this act. And in fact, for the whole game. Because what's the point if we don't, you know? So, I say digs only, for better or for worse. Ka ka. Shivs and relics go together like bread and butter. Firepot and a dash for the first elite sound really good. Could also take a backflip here. But I think if we're going to fight Elite Act 1, we should probably take a dash. Yeah, all the ninja relics, please. Please and thank you. Dash, very good in this fight, too. Another damage potion. Now we can take a backflip. Backflip enjoyers rise up. Deck wants a footwork now. Did we lose the ironclad streak? Alas, we did. But a new one will start soon. Jedi Master says, if I start with an upgrade, what would I upgrade on each character? Ironclad, I would upgrade Bash. Silent, I would upgrade Neutralize. Defect, I would usually go Zap over Dual Cast. And then Watcher, I would upgrade Eruption. Dual Cast, you don't always want to play, but Zap, you do always want to play, generally. So it's the better upgrade without any foreknowledge. Do I take a sucker punch? Meh. I'll skip these. Thankfully, we get a very easy fight for the first hardcore combat. 
these two fungi beasts are very easy to beat thanks to their low combined health and relatively generous attack pattern. Take an early Piercing Whale. Cause all enemies to lose strength. And I like my double damage potions going into the first elite here, so I'll leave a Gambler's Brew on the ground, and we're gonna dig. <laughs> That's why I usually ignore the shovel. That's pretty funny. So that only does something if we don't dig. I can't dig it. This is definitely a damage race. Uh-oh. damage. I want to kill it next turn. Let's see, we're guaranteed really only one strike. Let's assume two strikes. That's eight more damage. This is happening. So yeah, we should Blade Dance to try to save next turn's health. Six health to gamble on that. That's worth it. Get a paper crane. Weak is stronger. Now, I do wish I had taken the sucker punch after all. Oh, well. This next elite is going to kill me, though. That's a bummer. Maybe we need to rest. We also need stuff for hexagos, right? Yeah. We're pretty screwed here. Nunchaku's okay. Hourglass is good. Three damage every enemy every turn. Okay, let's let's YOLO. Let's just do it. I can't believe going all in on Shovel has failed us like this. How could this have happened? I thought this was the best relic in the game. Shenanigans. <laughs> so yeah, that's why we don't usually do that. We do take dash again, though. Definitely. <clears throat> How do I feel about runs where I don't get all four Neo bonuses for the purposes of streaks? I think people make way too much big of a, way too big a deal out of it. Neo's lament is a perfectly fine starting bonus. And if you're not good enough to win that first run with the Niao's Lament, you don't deserve the you're not gonna get the rest of the streak anyway. Basically. Uh not choke here, right? We go back flip. Let's go back flip. And we were trying to snipe, so take the event for sure. Well that failed. 
even when it fails to uh, snipe an elite, it still can be useful, by the way. Guardian, huh? Alright. That sounds fun. This elite might kill me, though. Again. That'd be embarrassing. Hmm. Is there ever a scenario where you could be forced to take damage in the first three lament fights? I think I saw a Reddit post where somebody had encountered it. I'm trying to remember what the circumstance is. It's something like... Yeah, if, if your first combat is the two slimes, they attack for six and twelve, you draw a Sender's Bane and four defends on Ironclad or Watcher or Defect. Actually, not Defect. Defect kills him with Lightning Orb. So Ironclad or Watcher. Four Defends and Ascender's Bane into Double Slimes. That'll do it. Two Lice can also hit for 16. Tassery says, I took damage in a Lament Fight because I used it into the Strange Mushroom event and they were all attacking turn one. That can also work. It's kind of cool. Did I upgrade Thousand Cuts? I did. Good for me. Good for me. We already have a footwork, huh? Yeah, but I might not get to play it. Plus, I want to block on turn one here. I can backflip Thousand Cuts. That's kind of bad, though, as these all go to the discard pile. It's not good. Although we get six less days in the discard pile, too. I think I'm just going to go dodge and roll, defend, strike. Excellent. Is that smug emote Madison? It sure is. From Dicey Dungeons. We've got a couple emotes from Dicey Dungeons. Excellent game. Very good sentries fight. Very good first elite overall. Liquid Bronze could help us in the boss fight, maybe. Terror will help us in any fight. Excellent. Take another combat, then we can take this event. I'll fight this elite, but probably not the burning elite. Unless I get a very good potion somehow. Seems unlikely. Hmm. Three yellow lice at least. Right. My face, I suppose. 
That's a crappy draw. This deck wants a deflect. Stat. We're going very um, passive, defensive, silent. Don't usually recommend this because of uh, Gremlin Nom, but we're just going to dodge an elite, grab a pantograph, and feel pretty good about life. Hmm. Many good upgrades at this point. Let's do the footwork next. Since I have the Panagraph, I'll take the Max Self here. Hello. Now, you two are deadly together. Pretty good Poison Potion would let me kill, kill the Louse right now. Let's do that. Dash here. Poison Pot here. Terror here. Take one. my money. Okay, Masterful Stab is very good in a deck like this. It's a zero cost card for a thousand cuts, and because the deck has such consistent block, we're often able to avoid taking any damage at all, such that this stays at zero cost. I like that quite a bit. Could simply get two more upgrades here, going into Guardian. I will fight another Elite, though. I think even against a Gremlin Nob, we're going to do okay. Especially with the power of the boot thingy giving us block on turn two. Now we've got some good relics going on. And guess what? It's not even Gremlin Knob. It's a sleepy egg boy who lets us play all the powers for free. I love it. My only regret is that we couldn't uh, also wake up on turn one there, but I think we can do just fine. The Whiskey Boy. That thousand cuts ends up pretty quick. Perfect fight. We get even more healing via the Eternal Feather. Coffee Dripper next? I hope so. And Blur to really round out the block game. Let's freaking do it. Full passive defense build. Go. That makes me want to upgrade the Neutralize for better weaken. Have I ever done a thousand damage to Transient with a thousand cuts? No, but I have played. I have killed the heart basically entirely with thousand cuts damage by duplicating thousand cuts a whole bunch of times, and then we played like twenty thousand cuts. I was just playing thousand cuts over and over and over again. I don't remember how I did that. don't understand how you would skip over boss floors and spear and shield to not trigger Nao's Lament for sniping later game enemies. It's a glitch called the Node Duplication Glitch, which allows you to do things like skip bosses. I think we're just blocking next turn. We can do that pretty easily, actually.
could do this all day, Guardian. Bring it on. You can't touch me. Very clean fight. GG. Death by a thousand cuts. For the Guardian here. Take a nightmare to duplicate cards. We do have some decent duplications, including Blur. Could make a Sneko easier. Alchemize is very generically useful. Creates a random potion for us, allowing us to use more potions at large. That's quite good. Don't think we can land Grand Finale with what we have currently. I'll take a uh, Alchemize. I'm quite happy with an Alchemize. And how do I feel about Black Star versus Astrolabe? Transform upgrade three cards could give us all sorts of beautiful nonsense. Black Star requires us to kill elites as we are. That sounds pretty hard, actually. Without additional energy, I think we really struggle against the elites of Act 2. So I don't think we can take this Black Star as much as I want to. It looks like an easy Astro uh, Astrolabe for me. Maybe that'll give me an after image, or cards that are multiple cards, like Blade Dance, would be really good with Thousand Cuts here. So yes, let's take an Astrolabe. What would a good Grand Finale deck look like? You've got Prepared and Backflip and Acrobatics and Well-Laid Plans. Basically, you want cards that draw different numbers of cards, and you want Retain. Those two things make Grand Finale reliable. As long as you can count, which is really hard to do, apparently. Well, we do get cards that let us play more cards. Bullet Time makes an entire hand free. Infinite Blades makes a shiv every turn. And Setup puts something on top and makes it zero cost, which could be the Thousand Cuts or the Bullet Time. I'd say those are actually pretty good cards, although certainly not the three I was envisioning as useful here. Let's fight some elites. I feel capable. Omni capable. We also heal at rest sites, so I want the rest site after the elite, not beforehand. Got good relics too. You can see bullet time setup working out. This deck needs an acrobatics now, and it's gonna work out so well. Look at this. We get to keep all of this value, although not really. Is it not even getting attacked? What's the point of 50 block if you're not even getting attacked? We're back for you, Alchemize. I swear it. Okay, maybe I don't actually swear it. Also, not gonna terror here. to reshuffle. Good. As you can see, we're a bit slow at killing things, which can definitely be our downfall. Particularly here in Act 2. Only I thought to use the Thorns Pot. Oh well. Ow. At least we get to play Alchemize now. Let's 
This is okay. I have so much dex, you know what? Sure. Sure. Best character to get the sub 20 minute achievement? Yeah, Ironclad. You can also play Watcher really quickly, but it's a lot easier to just lose when you do that. Ironclad and lean into all offense is super reliable. Not playing Blades feels bad here. We're gonna get robbed, aren't we? Help! My money! At least it's our money or our life, not our money and our life. Although I think he's getting away regardless, huh? We should do damage to this guy then. Give me my potion! Grand finale? Alas. This is not enough, right? We do another 20-ish. Now we gotta get this guy. He's out of here. No, I'm too short on this guy, too. Son of a bitch, this deck does no damage. All right, well, our money's gone. That's funny as hell. Thousand cuts, why are you so bad? Why are you so bad? a better turn one. It's a worse turn two, though. Can I even kill these two with our damage output? Is perhaps the more concerning question. No idea. I think we can. It's not that hard to outpace the, uh, Cleric here. Because every third turn she won't heal, thankfully. Although this will happen instead. This is terrible. How did it come to this? again. There we go. I think what we really need is another copy of Thousand Cuts. Tenth turn. <laughs> Help. Like I said, just one acrobatics makes this so much better. Or a blade dance. There we go. Oh, a blade dance. Seems nice. But I still feel like I can hit this way. Maybe not. Let's abort. Ritual dagger. Interesting. Hmm.
Nah. I don't want it. Well, this turn is a little bit iffy. gonna die though. Let's just go blur here. Put up gamble for next turn. Attack me! Thank you. Go blade dance gamble. Try to get the bullet time into my hand, which worked! Bullet time, thousand cuts, alchemize, defend, dash. Take not too much. Alright, now we can deal with the minions as they come in. Time saves the day again. Good fight. There's the acrobatics we wanted. Okay, this is really good. Really, really good now. And give me one of 20 cards. Second bullet time. Second calculated gamble. Second acrobatics. Take a Calcable. Hey there, Paskey. Our streak is unfortunately at an end now. But there will be another streak. Soon. Bird Nerds. fight is really bad for us. The brawl pile's not too bad, though. Good. Bad. Guess I'll try to gamble into that. Missed the footwork, of course. Really bad. Very bad. Extremely bad. Very, very bad. Damn it. Play one and pray. Yeah, it could have been worse, I guess. Pretty typical for a below damage deck in Act 2, though. You really, really lose hard to uh, Chosen. Sneaky strike's okay. I feel like we need some more help. Hmm. Plus one strength is definitely help. 
And the Bloody Idol healing us is also interesting. We could instead take more max health, although that means not taking the Burning Elite. Give me the Bloody Idol. Heal me when we gain gold. And send me into a metallicized Book of Stabbing fight. You heard me. You heard me. Acro here. Good. Good. Six times eleven incoming? Yeah, maybe. possible that we don't win this fight, gonna be honest. Especially with a draw like this. Unload. No. Just have to survive this though. Easy. Yeah, that's ain't too bad. make the difference up next turn, if necessary here. Oh boy, oh no. Draw the blade dance for the bullet time. I get screwed by the draw here? Hmm. 18, 7. If. Flex spot, we're good. All right, we're fine. Ooh, and we get a deflect plus. We are blocking like kings now. I think Collector ought to be very reasonable to defeat here. I wonder if Sundial will make the difference here. Okay, a couple of the uh, expensive stuff in play already. sign of cuts yet. Very nice to have. Big attack power out of all of them here, unfortunately. Cool turn, though. plus sundial value. No frailty either. You know, this might not be half bad. be half bad. Just glad we didn't get another strength buff, quite frankly. Next turn could really hurt, though. 
the new minions here being able to deal damage. Everybody's doing full power attacks. I've got nothing in the way of removing them off the field. That's spicy. Oh. But if we can last through the debuffs, one more nasty turn here. Neutralize coming up too. Spooky. Looks like I can survive. Looks like I can survive. and difficult battle, but we prevail thanks to the uh, impressive defense this deck has to offer, as well as consistent whittling down of foes. Gonna need to accelerate our damage a little bit if we want this to work in the end game here. Grand Finale would be a hilarious way to do damage, but I have no retain still. I think we might want to take a Corpse Explosion, giving us some... Uh, Better advantage in multi-enemy fights, especially Donudeka, Shield and Spear. Burst could be interesting with Blur and Alchemize and stuff, but definitely awkward. Take a Corpse Explosion. And it's Box, Bell, or Stone. I guess we take Philo Stone. I don't like that. Uh, we definitely want four energy here in Act 3. Otherwise, silent on three energy is very hard. Pro tip, don't play three energy silent if you can help it. You will have a bad time. Still looking for more ways to deal damage passively. Caltrops or Fumes would be welcome. At this stage... Can we avoid dying to Darklings is the real question. As ever, Boat Thingy is here to help. As much as it can. Which is not enough. Hmm. Corpse Explosion's again the easy out here. If I play Corpse Explosion, I can't do Footwork, Cloak and Dagger, Dash. I'll do that. Block 43, take more than that. By quite a margin, unfortunately. You guys both suck. We got the corpse explosion down, now we just need to kill this thing one time. It shouldn't be hard. And yet. We kill the front one. Lots of healing, thankfully. 
Am I desperate enough to take a Sucker Punch Plus? Kind of. Please tell me I can find a Leg Sweep. Sure, or a Malaise. Come on, one time. Catalyst for damage? If only we had poison. Who even needs damage, really? There's Caltrops. Okay, Caltrops is infinite damage. Probably. What about Abacus? buy Keltrop, so I can't buy Abacus. Okay, so it's either remove or double. I can remove Infinite Blades, which is not a bad idea. Infinite Blades is garbage. Sort of. Setup is going to be more helpful if we don't have Infinite Blades, probably. Well, if we have fewer cards in general, rather. I'd much rather have a different power than that. Let's see what happens. Ooh. Fight a boss, get a rare relic. We're one Tingsha away from uh, destroying everything. Give me a Tingsha. But first, we have to get past Hexaghost with plus one strength at full health. It's kind of spooky, actually. Seven times six. Ow. No, that's fine. This is seven times seven. Turns does it take to kill a hexaghost? Concerning question. Next turn shouldn't be too bad and still have weakened, thankfully. But yeah, we actually get hit by Inferno, <laughs> which is interesting. Very interesting. Enjoy your spikes, friend. GG. Get a bird faced urn, even more healing now when we play a power card. And you better believe I'm going to take a backflip plus. Gain at least nine block and draw two. Question is, how do we beat Giant Head? Giant Head seems like a big problem for us. Maybe this is Nemesis. Good. Okay, Nemesis is easier. Definitely. Still a potentially very difficult fight, because we have no retain. But at least the Caltrops will sometimes deal damage to this enemy. And we can whittle them down slowly. That part is nice. The bomb will deal 40 damage. That's also going to help a lot. Ooh, 
jerk. Oh, thankfully we have a uh, sundial though. This is another good turn for bomb. So let us set up the bomb. And then play the bomb. Shock Piper, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Wow, what an aggro nemesis this has been. Good, okay. Easier than Giant Head, that's for sure. Get a Shovel. And a Reflex. Reflex is good. If this card is discarded from our hand, draw two. I like it. I think I am going to continue fighting Elites, even though it's unwise. <laughs> now we're talking. Second Caltrops. We've had first Caltrops, yes, but what about second Caltrops? Head, actually. I don't have enough block for heart, though. That's not a good sign. Uh, hmm. Ah, okay, now we do. That made life a lot easier, actually. That also made Giant Head a lot easier. Let's fight, let's fight an Elite now. Not even Giant Head, sweet. Repto is way less scary than Giant Head, believe it or not. Well, once we get the Thousand Cuts down, anyway. Hmm. Before that, it could be a bit of a problem, actually. Gamble. Shoot. This is still playable, but I made a mistake. It's foolish. Damn it. get lots of healing, so it's not that big a deal to uh, take damage here. face, though. Like I said, though, we do get a lot of healing. Hmm. 
The wounds have added up. Maybe it was Retko I should have been more afraid of than uh, Giant Head, I guess. Not as bad as it looks, though, actually. There we go. We're alive. And we got the leg sweep I wanted. Excellent. All right, we pretty much have everything we need then. Ever had all the options at once in the rest site? You cannot find Shovel and Guria and Peace Pipe in the same run. Once you get two out of three, the game will not generate the third one. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Ugly Wombat. Did you hear about the marsupial that could never die? It's an immortal wombat. So you could get double orb walkers. Does that help me? No, right? We're much better at hallway fights here. We're still in the easy pool, in fact. <laughs> Embarrassing. We can heal a lot in these fights, too. Maybe we'll even find a well-aid plans and life can become good again. Just be garbage sometimes, though. Hell pet with a full year of fun. Thanks for 12 months of support. from this enemy can scale pretty quickly, which is a little worrying here. A thousand cuts on the bottom and all that. Hasn't done any major attacks yet, though, thankfully. Turn could be big, though. Lots of card draw coming up. I'm going to set up the bullet time and hope. Yeah, 15 by 4. Spooky. Except. Oh, man. And that's with Weaken, too. It's to be 20 by 4 otherwise. The end of it all, we've healed a ton, though. Such that we're actually at full health going into Donudeka. And I'm going to upgrade this Tactician. How's it going, Ralph Lape? 
Welcome from the YouTube to some addicting Spire gameplay. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Endlessly replayable, endlessly enjoyable. It's really great. Definitely on a clock in this fight. With Donu and Deka buffing their strength constantly, we are absolutely in a race against time here. I'm gonna go for Donu first, although it really doesn't matter who we target because of Corpse Explosion. We heal 25 into the next fight as well, so any damage we take up to a certain point will be forgiven. going to be very easy to exceed that damage threshold, unfortunately. Two is pretty spooky. Overblock it. Totally imperative that we play Corpse Explosion upon drawing it. Deck. Donu is uh, deck is doing 25 by two, which is way too much. And we're still a long way away from Donu being dead here. And the weekend is worn off of Donu. There's a bunch of days in the draw pile. Spooky. Very spooky. Draw three. Oh boy. But my face. done, though. Really great example of a deck that just does not have the damage output required. Spooky. Yeah. Right, we need to kill Donu next turn, realistically. Can I actually make that happen? Yes. As long as I correctly pin Nib Sneaky Strike. Woof! Didn't I? That's probably the hardest um, boss of Act 3 for us, so I think Time Eater in particular will be a bit more forgiving here. We can get set up pretty well. Let's just get our one time use cards out of here. We have a fairy as well, of course. And I'm immune to being frail. Feels good. Have some spikes, sir. Caltrops will have to be the bulk of our damage in this fight, which is not great. But every multi-attack the Time Eater does, they take 24 damage back. That's pretty good.
Our consistently good blocks and our passive damage give us uh, a leg up in the time eater fight here. Lose the terror for the second half of the fight, which is a little bit yikes. Only a little bit. Again, Caltrops will provide a lot of the damage for us. Just gotta make sure we don't let the slimes pile up too much. Thankfully, we have Blur to build up block before it ends. Just 64. Nintendo 64. Please stop that. Ah, crud. <laughs> oh no. Terrible. Why would you do this to me last minute, sir? No, we can still block it, right? Look how good I am at blocking. Foolish, foolish. But yeah, as you can see, Time Eater, really not that bad here. Certainly less threatening than Donu and Deca were. We get through, no problem. And the answer there, uh, somebody asked earlier, what, what advice can you give for Time Eater? Don't play the Blade Dance, right? Like, we have this deck with all these cards in it. Sure, we have some play lots of cards effects, like the Blade Dance Cloak and Dagger, but we don't actually have to use those. We can just play the other cards. And that's good enough. Take your time. That's good advice, that's true. Most number of cards I've ever had in a winning run, uh, I've definitely done 50. I feel like we might have had a 60 run at one point. I'm not sure about that. Hmm. Caltrops, leg sweep, what? Let's see. 8 by 15. Uh, we do want more damage out of Caltrops, sure. Although, because the heart has plus one strength and we have no piercing whales, I really don't see this ending well for us. That said, if I get another footwork and a finesse, maybe that's good enough? Can't afford the bronze scales with the Tori, sadly. But maybe this will do? Realistically, I see this fight going very badly. It's already a bad turn one. Yeah, I see this going very badly. I think we're just gonna die here. Set up reflex. If we brick next turn, we're completely dead. I wouldn't call that a brick. Definitely not a brick. Good. Hmm, we do sort of need to get the Keltrops in play, huh? Yes, slow damage in this fight is going to be really bad. I 
think I need to play Caltrops. Although I also need to play Dodger Roll. Hmm. Skip this one. Without any retain, though, I can't possibly see this fight going well. This has got to be Blur Defense. So we don't get killed here. still do get killed here. Yeah, we're, we're toast here. We're totally toast. GG. Didn't think we had what it took for this fight. Definitely way, way too slow. We might have been able to beat Heart if I could just magic my way through this fight, but no front load equals no act four. Plain and simple. GG. GG. Desecrated. Pretty cool that we're even even able to get to the end game though with such a uh, defensive passive deck. Definitely, we needed a different boss relic than Philo Stone to have a good chance here. Not bad, not bad. That was indeed a fun run. Next up, we're gonna do a fun run with the defects. But before that happens, I'm gonna take a break, refill the leg, stretch the water. When I return. The defect climbs onward. Be right back to a shed. That's a, that is a really good example of a deck that works way better on lower ascension. That kind of archetype: multiple footworks, multiple caltrops, very passive, silent, very good on ascension fifteen, very bad on ascension twenty. Back in a bit to a shed.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Shall we play some Defect? I'm hoping for a, a Storm deck, personally. Let's do something weird. Which probably means boss swap? Huh, Odd Act 1. Hmm. Let's boss swap. Ooh, one of my favorites, the Astrolabe. I like to transform three strikes in this situation. We get a Meteor Strike plus, a Hello World plus, and a Beam Cell plus, which should be fine. Neat. Definitely qualifies as something unusual happening. What if we ever do this? Then these two elites, get the Burning Elite Act 1. Kind of like that. Let's see if we can find a way to play this Meteor Strike. Maybe we'll get a Turbo. Turbo one time. Incursion. That is not a turbo. Oh, so close. I'll take a ball lightning. We have a beam cell plus, so attack cards are definitely going to be valued here. The ball lightning does pretty decent damage up front. The Merchant appears, very surprisingly, very suddenly. On Sale Cold Snap is not a bad card. We could get rid of the last strike already, which I'm kind of about. Strikes are terrible on this character. Although, I don't really want to go to this shop anymore. Maybe should have thought that slightly differently through. But only slightly. Hmm. Heat sinks are back. You know, that's really tempting. Though I don't see how we beat an elite if I take the heat sinks. I guess Hello World can do it for us. You know what? I'm gonna be weird. I'm also going to trade my face. I get a Gremlin Visage. We're now weak on turn one of all fights. That's not what I wanted. I want a refund. There's a speed pot there, maybe. New refunds, huh? <laughs> There's the turbo. Bonk. How many more times can we play Meteor Strike? A lot more if I take a fusion, perhaps. Well, maybe not. How about a Sunder? A Sunder Beam Cell is a thing. Not a good enough thing to let me take this Elite, though, I don't think. Upgrade that Sunder. Hey, that'll do. So will that. Hmm. 
Let's take a compiled river. Damage and card draw. With the current cards that we have, we can theoretically get three three different orb types. Although in practice, that's very hard to achieve, I think. The power of hell heat sinks. We drew one. Good for us. All right. This beam cell sunder ought to be pretty sufficient here. Although, what about next turn? It's not a kill. Heck. That's rather unfortunate. Guess I'll just speed pot this end. Love hologram. Get any card from the discard pile. Could be beam cell, could be charge battery. Could be whatever. Still gonna go here, by the way. Although we might lose the lizard tail very quickly. Go to one. Sunder just kills, so I think we're fine. Powers. Ooh, and a remove transformer upgrade. <clears throat> Probably we want an upgrade here. Charge battery upgrade looks good. White noise upgrade's also okay. How much damage would be appropriate for an attack that increased by one in cost each time you shuffled the deck? Maybe make it double each time you uh, draw it, so it'd be like 10 for 1, 2 for 20, 40 for 3, 80 for 4 if you can play it. Upgrade Hologram is reasonable-ish, although not for this Burning Elite, it's not. Look at that value. We'd have to use the lizard tail on this turn without upgrading the battery here. No electro, sadly. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much like the Desperado card from Hermit. That's right. Although that's per time you play it rather than per time you shuffle. Kind of similar, I guess. So we can do Sunder, and thanks to Charge Battery, I can go Hologram, Sunder, Sunder again, Cool-Headed, Defend, Falling. And just like that, we're through this fight without even using the tail. Easiest burning elite of my life. Dreamcatcher says we should probably rest going into the slime boss. I guess so. Are we taking a streamline? No, because I have Sunder. Go for the eyes is fine, though. Yoink. Now the heat sinks is starting to look good, too. could hollow for three damage. I'd rather just keep the card. But what if I don't draw the buffer? That'd be embarrassing. I guess I could just play the Sunder then. But is that good? Very unclear.
Sad white noise, unfortunately. All right, we need more lightning in play for sure here. Oh, we're buffering the first hit. Bummer. Could have done this fight without losing tail, but uh, the draws weren't here for us, unfortunately. We needed buffer before the split. Before the big hit, rather. And then we needed to see Sunder again. Oh well. Had worse times. The lightning orb splitting chaotically is not helping, though. There we go. We're through the boss, at least. Not the world's worst all for one. I'll grab reboot. These are really bad. More energy does get us closer to playing the Meteor Strike. I guess I can go faster with Runic Dome. <laughs> I'll just take Dome here. When in Rome, upgrade. I wonder what he's doing. The go for the eyes are a little bit helpful here as they can tell us whether an enemy is attacking or not. for the kills. Force field plus with a lot of powers in the deck is a very good block card. FTL plus does help us deal some more damage, which we are lacking in a little bit right now. Here's a rack boss. Collector. I'll take force field actually. And I'll fight the bird nerds. Who's attacking me on turn one? Is it you? No. Is it? Doesn't matter. It's them. Uh oh. This is not ideal. Let's just reboot chaotically here. I do get centered. So close. Upgrading Go for the Eyes will still only do two damage, unfortunately. I could Sneck a Oil, though. Let's do that. With these cards in hand, let's do that. That's what we needed.
Good turn there. How about a real Turbo Plus? That will allow us to play the Meteor Strike. Definitely. Brown bagging it. Thanks so much for the Prime sub in the 16 months. I'll bet on noodles. The Nemesis was slain. We win the bet. Unsure what to take, we grab our winnings and head straight into the shop. And there's Amplify Storm. Cool. I like it. I said I wanted to do Storm, so let's do it. And I can buy either Healing or Remove. I like the Healing, I think. Oh wait, I can buy the Panache? Actually. Buy this. Hell yeah. Hmm. Spooky fight. I could just hologram center, right? Yeah. That seems good. And then we guaranteed get attacked on this turn for quite a bit of damage. Let's forge pot this. Another power. Hell yeah. Alright, heat sinks, upgrade. Hmm. Two out of three books are really good here. And I get a card reward for resting anyway, so sure. Actually, all books are really good here. Including this one. The first attack played each turn costing two or more is played twice. So we have double Sunder, and if we can play it, double Meteor Strike. Awesome. And I don't mind Steam Barrier Plus for some more block here. Yeah, that's okay. Blue can- wait a minute. Blue Candle Necronomicers can do some interesting stuff. I don't think I want this, but it does have a niche utility currently, allowing us to trigger Panache for five hit points, which might be worth it against Collector, but I, I really doubt it. I'll take the blue key. Yeah, like break our buffer, exactly. Exactly. Which needs to be upgraded as well. Had I already got a Tungsten Rod, different story, but... I don't already have a Tungsten Rod, so, yeah. That's a good attack from both of them. Probably wants to be Buffer Beam Cell Streamline. Yeah, it needs to be. Streamline gets played twice, after all.
her blap. And yeah, Streamline is zero cost after doing that. Which is pretty cool. Upgrade Amplify or upgrade Panache? I don't think Amplify is ready to be upgraded yet. Snack is good. I've got a Meteor Strike. Ho, ho, ho. Here it is. Fortunately, Beam Cell would get played twice. We do Meteor Strike first. Then we can go double sunder. Charge battery, turbo, reboot. Excellent. Consider this a desirable opening hand in this situation. So, Distilled Chaos, what do you got for me? Seems better. That was actually almost worth thinking about a Forge Pot. I think we're okay, though. Yeah, that would have been a good porch pot. Admittedly. Oh well. Bonk. Get a Power Potion, a Nunchaku, and a Skim, which I like quite a bit. Skim is going to be really good where we're going. Which character would I say has the most mindless A20 wins? Probably Ironclad. Ironclad likes the Big Bonk and crazy Corruption decks and Sneko decks. Watcher is never mindless. Even when it's easy, it's not mindless. Unless you're turn one infinite, then it is mindless. Let's try to get powers down. Yeah. So, amp the storm. Play the heat sinks. Two lightning, two draw per power. Which I might want to do now. Yeah, let's use this. Perfect. Plenty of block. I guess no need to turbo then. No meteor strike for us. It's unfortunate. Turn. 
Hologram, Meteor Strike, Turbo, Double the Meteor. Electro's attacking us. I've got lots of energy, though. Fight. Now we have an Entropic Brew, and if we want one, an Echo Form, which I certainly want here. Doubling the first card we play each turn. Just more powers is what the deck wants to spam from here. Triple Meteor with a Runic Pyramid. At the end of our turn, we no longer discard our hand. No question in my mind that that's what we want here. So that we can retain the Meteor Strike to line up with the Turbo and otherwise abuse things like our Amplify. Lots of GG's going around in chat. Of course, it ain't over till it's over. There's definitely ways to flub this from here, just to be clear. By going for max elites, for example. It's a possibility. Okay, actually. I really want another deep rag at the moment. I don't even have a real cool headed, right? That's all from the thing. Take a chill. Never even knew what hit him. Poor guy. It's gonna happen to our echo form sometime. It's, it might actually be worth upgrading the echo form just to avoid that. not good. Where are my cards at? Bla this is bad enough I'm going to use the Tropic Brew here. Throw me bound. Don't do much either. Shame. Ouch. Eh, it wasn't that bad. Sorry, Beam Cell, but your time has passed. Not willing to lose charge battery or my heat sinks plus here. I think I'll be better off without you, quite frankly. Is Panache good here, or do we take it for fun? It serves the role of area damage as well as being a zero cost power, which is pretty good. With the heat sinks in the storm. It's got use.
Unupgraded hollows are a little weak, but probably still worth including. These four are kind of dangerous. Center next turn at least. Uh, get a draw. Yeah. I knew someone was gonna hit me. They always do. They always do. Panache also a spiker solution. It's kind of nice. Double energy is okay, but I don't have a way to spend that energy properly. Need more card draw for that to be actually good. This guy with Runic Dome is terrifying. I can't play Echo Form because he could just kill me. Yep, he would have just killed me. There we go. Buffer is nice and safe. is perhaps one of the best relics to get, though, and another Meteor Strike is hilarious. So I think we're fine here. Compile Driver's Car Draw. Renico, thanks for the two months. Finally catching a stream. Good stuff. Ah, the dome, man. The freaking dome. Sir, you're being a jerk. Goodbye, world. More energy. And another defrag. This one says plus, so I guess I must. Let's do it. Meal ticket heals me at shops. Good. 
these jerks again. Bad. Very bad. This way. Good. Excellent. Seems good. Ow! Holy crap, that hurt. Four buffers was not enough block, apparently. Terrifying. And none of them were attacking, of course. They're gonna triple buff. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Um... Okay, that'll work. That'll work. These guys are so rude. What nonsense. Is he not, though? Come on. Probably go to the shop, not the elite. Take a curse for another heal, but I don't want that. Double punash. Data disc and slash or runic capacitor. There's also another storm here. It's gonna kind of fall apart in the end game, huh? Card draw is good. Deck definitely wants more card draw under any circumstances. So let's take the master strategy, actually. I think that is about as good as we're going to get. Meteor actually get me anywhere? I'm not sure that it does. The rebound, compile, compile, compile. Buffer. Send her again! Fight. Frost Orb seems okay. This enemy never attacks on turn one, thankfully. Pretty bad turn one draw. Could attack for up to 30 on this turn, which makes playing Echo Form kind of a crap idea. Other stuff to do here. So get played twice? Yes. Hello, skim then. Now we can amp echo form. <laughs> Alright, you deal at most one damage, sir. That's what we take, one damage. It's 
Seems like we're strong. We kill Maul on turn three. It's quite a bit of damage, actually. Self repair. Take another go for the eyes. Go for the eyes is kind of like cheating with Runic Dome in that it it secretly tells us whether or not the enemy is attacking. We could infer this information by playing the card and seeing what it does, but even more than that, the card itself will actually glow yellow if there's an enemy attacking. So I know, for example, that Time Eater is just straight up not attacking me on turn one, so we don't play any cards. Easy peasy. There's the yellow glow. I really like Amplify Buffer, I guess. Doesn't seem like it's gonna happen, though. I try to kill you, I guess. like to block now. You can have your heal. The Triple Meteor. To finish the fight, next up is the Bird Nerd. Who could give us a bit of a headache here, potentially. We have to play only some of our powers in this fight. Pretty easy to know exactly what the Awakened One is doing each turn. So we shouldn't find ourselves surprised too often. I don't have any way to get rid of these powers other than by playing them though, do I not? Guess I don't. attack turn. It's too many powers.
A new cutie! It's been 84 years, Elite Nanas! Welcome to the illustrious list of channel cuties. Also, Sinsel Jax, thanks for the Prime sub in two years. I'm waiting for First Card Claw. <laughs> it's never gonna happen. And Ailey's, thanks for 27 months. Let me get you added right away there, uh, Elite Nanas. Need to go aggro, huh? This won't work. In, yeah, I, the, usually in a Waken One fight, you either want to play some of your powers or all of the powers. Rarely is it none of the powers. This is guaranteed the multi hit attack, which is going to be for strength, just 7 by 4. So you only take 7 currently. No room to even draw into the echo form now. I don't want to draw echo form yet. Alright, so I'll just amp buffer, and then we gotta be real aggro after this. Strike, what are you doing? Thank you. Still have one buffer for this turn. This triple Sunder is a good start. Could have been a good time for the Fear Potion, actually. Meteor Strike. Don't think I need the Fear Potion. Looks like enough damage. GG. That 
wasn't too bad. Just play all the powers at the same time. Easy peasy. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire? The source of all these duplicated meteors. Deal 2088. Have I been here before? Yeah, unfortunately we lost Lizard Tail back, I think, to Slime Boss, if I remember correctly. Zach who desperately wants more card draw. We need to upgrade the holograms. Yesterday. Enlightenment is interesting. Another white noise is interesting. Take a white noise. Alright, nerds. What do you got? Excellent. I have no idea if I'm getting obliterated turn one or not. I like the suspense. It wasn't. Convenient. Pretty crap turn one all around, though, unfortunately. Didn't get any draw or anything. Ouch. Good liquid memories, the... Force field for more block. It's pretty bad use of it, though. It's not. I don't think we live for very long, sadly. No sign of Meteor Strike is particularly damning. Though at least we can amplify Buffer. I'll keep you alive for this turn. Five Buffers! Even better. Looks like Beat of Death will kill us. Unless something really spectacular occurs. That is not it. Seem very good. No, I would say that's not very good at all. None of this blocks for anything, unfortunately. Defeat is visited upon the defect. So it goes, Twitch chat. So it goes. Got two runs into Act Four with the defect in silent. Neither really had a chance, sadly. Guess that's what happens when you build uh, a wacky deck. GG. GG. Meet Popsicle sent you me your draw energy. Well, thanks, I guess. Thanks. Spire 4. Yeah, the Spire's wind streaking us today. Tools being changed to uncommon. Maybe swap tools with, um, well-aid plans? 
You'd have to swap it with something, I imagine. Well, Twitch chat, I think that's all the energy I have for today. Had some good runs, but I am no longer feeling it. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, some more attemptage of the Spire. Perhaps a new streak starts on the clad. But uh, for now, Twitch chat, I'm going to get out of here and say so long, farewell, and thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you later, Faley. F Dante, Meat Popsicle, Terror Incognita, Good Loser, Coup Lightwing, I Am Quarry, Nerozy, Explosive Ash, Crip Rat Daddy, and everybody else. Thank you so much, so much for watching. Have a cozy, cozy, good one. Till next time, my friends. See you all again soon. Bye bye. <laughs>